We will wait without hope, without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory Hey, good morning. It is so good to be back with you again. I hope you enjoyed the first message. I pray that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. What a prayer from one of God's mightiest apostles written down in the Bible for us to inspire us and to bring about the change that's necessary in our lives to live more than conquerors. God didn't create 
victims. He created sons and daughters who would rule and reign with him. Think about that. Selah. Pause. The Bible is so full of amazing truths like that, that God caused us to rule and to reign with him. That was our job in the Garden of Eden until the end of time. And Jesus, the first time he came, is to restore us to that place and that position. So thank you for tuning in. This is going to be a day of restoration of your position in God. Only Jesus can give it to you. Only, only Jesus died to end the, that, that judgment that was against you. And that denied you that position because God knew you'd use all that power and authority against him. But now that you have allowed God to be for you and restore you, you are going to become the person that God meant you to be. So thank you for tuning in. The exciting thing, we've got some exciting messages coming in the new year. I really pray that you don't miss them. They're going to be amazing. Um, they are going to strengthen you and redirect you. And yes, you can start the new year. Yes, you can get a fresh start. And you will have ups and downs, but you don't have to give up. And we're going to be talking about that. Let me pray for you first. Father, we thank you that you open our hearts and you open our minds and you strengthen us. Give us ears to hear and a heart to hear what you have to say to us. We know at times some things might be hard. But it's because you are strengthening us for the days ahead, for the victories ahead, for the battles ahead, ahead to be strong in you. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Like I was sharing last week, I had started a diet and lost close to 15 pounds. And there's been times it's been struggles, you know, complete change in diet and eating what you're supposed to eat and not always what you want to eat. And the amounts that you're supposed to eat and so on and so forth. And it, it is a process of growing into something, you know. Uh, when, when we first come to Christ, we are growing into becoming Christians. And I talked about that last time. We are becoming. We, we, we are saved. The minute we receive Jesus, we're on our way to heaven. The process of God is working in our lives to change us and to transform us. The more we surrender to God, we are being saved. We're not just saved. If the work is complete, if we would instantly leave the earth, we'd be in the presence of God in heaven for all eternity. But the process of becoming more like Christ, this season, this time of our lives, where we're here in the earth to prove our faith, to prove that we are uh, uh, are saved. It, it is proof, the life that we live for God, it, it is proof that something began, a good work of God began in you, a grace is in you, a power is in you. God's presence is in you. God's spirit is in you. It's, it's all proof of the life you're going to have. But you should be strong in this life. It is proof of the life that you've received. You are saved. You're being saved. You're in the process of, of putting that life that's in you to work. It's, it's, it's putting that life, that strength of God in you to work. And that's what it means to be a Christian, to let the life of God work in your mind, your spirit, your soul, your body. Last week we talked about um, it's never too late. I just want to reiterate that again. Somebody may be watching for the first time. You know, it's never too late to begin again. Every year people have New Year's resolutions. And many statistics say that 50 to 80 percent of the people quit before the first month is up. You don't have to quit. You don't have to quit. You just keep doing it until you become it, you know. We are in the process of becoming. Becoming is a big word. You don't become something overnight. The other day I was with my grandson, and, and I cannot believe how big he has grown. He's five weeks old, and for the tiny little baby that he was until now, it's so amazing. He, he's, he's already uh, longer and stronger and bigger. He's a five weeks old and he rolled over. The doctor cannot believe it. He's becoming a child. He's going to become a man. He's going to come into full adulthood. Christianity is like that. We are in the process of becoming more like Christ every day. But as he's eating that food, he's getting stronger. As we eat God's word, the food that's God's word, the discipline that comes through God's word, we're becoming stronger 
every single day to overcome the proclivities, the shortcomings, the doubts, the fears, the negative desires to, to do things that we know are unhealthy for us. Yeah, you're in the process of becoming. God don't, doesn't give up on you. Don't you give up on you. More people give up on themselves. That's why we read the word. It's filled with encouragement. You know, it literally means to put courage in you, to put strength in you. God doesn't want you to give up on yourself. God is in you. The Bible said to will and to work. Wow. God's putting his will in you. God is working in you. Do not be discouraged. Don't let evil times discourage you. There's always going to be evil times. There's always going to be the wrong people in power, the right people in power, you know, friends, neighbors, people around you doing the wrong thing. Listen, and don't pay attention to anybody else. Make sure you're working on you. You're working on you. All of a sudden people say, well, wow, you know, all of a sudden, you know, that guy, you know, he, he became, you know, something. And I wonder how he did it. No, he didn't pay attention or criticize. He spent all the time looking at his neighbors. He spent all the time looking at what he could become. Look at Jesus and you see what you could become. So the Bible said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He who began a good work in you will bring it to its completion. Let's read that scripture. Third John, I pray, one, I pray you prosper and be in every way. Prosper in every way and be in health even as your soul prospers. So it's, last week I told you, it's never too late to begin. People say it's too late, we'll never start. You have to start. You just have to start. You just have to make your mind. Today is the day the Lord has made, I will rejoice in it. Today is the day, it, 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 you don't have to make giant steps. I mean, you don't have to leap off a building in a single bound. You know what I'm saying? The first, you know, the journey of a million miles begins with the first steps. I mean, just making a decision, yes, I am going to become healthy spirit, soul, and body. Last week we talked about what it means to have a healthy spirit, to be in communion with God, to obey God's word, to walk in God's word. It's good food, it's good strength. It will help you to do the things that won't kill you, but strengthen you. I talked about your soul, which once your soul gets depressed, it does everything it can to satisfy itself, no matter how good or how bad. The soul doesn't understand what's good for it, it's emotional. It's, you know, I, I remember many years ago, I bought a video by Dom DeLuise, uh, and his mother gave it to him when he was always depressed and unhappy. She would cook him something, and, and she'd say, eat this, it'll make you feel better. Well, it didn't make him feel better. It just increased his weight, <laughs> and he eventually got more and more unhealthy. You know, you can never fix your soul by doing things that are unhealthy. I pray you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. The soul, mind and emotions need that connection with God to be strong. Then your body, your actions, everything will just fall in line. So you're in the process of becoming. That's what the last message is about. Now I, 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 I'd like to connect a little bit more for you. It says, uh, um, I want to tell you this, I admire people who keep trying until they succeed. I mean, the Bible is filled with stories who kept trying. The Bible is filled with stories who kept failing. I mean, Moses was a failure. <laughs> you know, everything he did, he killed an Egyptian. He, you know, he made big mistakes. Peter made big mistakes. Apostle Paul made big mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. The thing is, we just, what's the difference between someone who's a success, someone they keep going until they succeed. They keep practicing. You know, the Bible talks about there's a difference between those who practice unrighteousness and those who practice righteousness. I practice being what God wants me to be. I practice obeying God's word. I practice being a disciple. I practice uh, um, my Christian faith. I don't practice the things that are not of God or things that are outside of God's will. I, I, I'm practicing to be better at walking with God and obeying God and, and doing what God wants because I know it will be good for me. What are you practicing? What are you filling yourself with? I mean, you know, so much in the world. I mean, 
Yeah, I love all that stuff. TikTok and YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and connecting and seeing people's lives and living vicarious through people who, who really don't have much of a life, but they've got some celebrity and they've got some money, but inside they're so hollow, they're so broken. Little fly, just fly. Come on, come on, be your best self. Those people will, will never leave the world out of heartache or trouble. But it, you know, those, those people will, will never be able to lead their family unless something gets inside of them that has deep roots and deep values to the things that overcome. You know, those are emotional junk food. You know, we watch all this stuff, it's emotional junk food. We just live our lives in, in, in junk food and one day it kills us. We live our lives without true spiritual nourishment and one day we're separate and far from God and spiritually dead. You know, Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and life. In Romans 10, it says uh, that you call Jesus your Lord, but then you must believe he rose from the dead. Why? Because so many of us, we're so beyond help, we need a resurrection. But that's why Jesus Christ came. He can infuse you with a resurrection. He can resurrect your life. He can resurrect you into the spirit. He can resurrect you into the kingdom of God. He can resurrect you into the Christian life. He can resurrect you into living a vital, spirit-filled, powerful life. He can resurrect you from victim to victor. He can resurrect resurrect you from someone who lives defeated to an overcomer's life. Jesus has resurrected. The Bible says the, Bible says the same power that rose Christ from the dead will live in you, will dwell in you. God gave you his spirit to resurrect you from that spiritual deficit that you needed in your inner man to make you more than a conqueror so that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. The power of resurrection is in you right now. And once you're resurrected, you'll be resuscitated. God is breathing in you every single day until you can breathe on your own. Powerful thing. It's a powerful thing. Cooperate with God. I admire people who keep on trying until they succeed. I'm doing well, losing weight, gaining strength, you know, and there are times that I made mistake. I shared last, last, last time I preached to you that during the holidays, I let some things slip, but it was important to me not to continue. We, you know, we're just human. We let the things that are important slip We begin to major in, in, in minors. Come on. It's a new year. Get back to what's important becoming a disciple, getting strong spiritually, not giving up, being strong. I admire people who keep trying until they succeed. You have to be that person. All these success stories that you read, you know, it, 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 it's, it wasn't weak people. It was people who had determined themselves what was important in their lives. What's important in your life? I pray that you be in hell and prosper even as your soul prospers. I pray what's important to you that you keep making a decision because it's never too late to become, to become healthy, spirit, soul, and body. I pray that you make that decision. That's what Apostle uh, uh, John was praying. He was praying that you be in health and prosper. He was praying for that, praying for you now. Asking God now, I, I, I pray that you would hear these words to be in hell. What is important? Keep the things important before you. What's important to you? You're going to have to think about that. What's important to me is my faith. What's important to me is my family. What's important to me is being healthy. What's important to me is helping change the world. What's important to me is the church. What's important to me is doing something bigger than myself. What's important to you? What is important to you? What is important to you? Don't baby those weaknesses. Jesus has cut them off. Jesus says resist them. Jesus says be strong and in the strength of my mind. So, I, I want to give you three things today before I close this message. A complete person. Say a complete person. That means you could think you have the whole world and lose your soul if you're not a complete person. Some people think they're complete because they have possessions, they have power, they have money, they, they have this, they have that. Some people have nothing but they're rich in faith and they're a complete person. 
because they're on that journey to, to getting all that they need. It's better to have nothing and, and, and be on a journey with God than have everything and be so far from God. You're an incomplete person, a complete person, a successful person, a whole person is one who has integrated their natural and spiritual lives with Jesus' teaching. Can't get simpler than that. Can't define Christianity simpler than that. That's what a that's what a complete person is, a successful person is, a whole person is, is one who has integrated their natural and spiritual lives with Jesus' teaching. I pray you be in health even as your soul prospers. Spirit, soul, and body you have to be healthy in all three realms. I talked last week about how we are to be so fruitful at the end of our life that we just picked like a fruitful fruit and brought to heaven so God can rejoice over you. God doesn't want to rescue a bunch of victims who gave up and lived defeated. That's not a victorious people. That's not a victorious church. That's not a reflection of God. So a complete person, a successful person, a whole person is one who has integrated their natural and spiritual lives with Jesus' teaching. So that's how you integrate spirit, soul, and body. Connecting with God, healing your soul, and bringing your actions in alignment. Communing with God, connection with God, healing your soul, and bringing your actions into alignment with God brings victory. That's what you're called to do. Jesus taught a restored relationship with God. A commitment to walk in His will produces wholeness and success. So many people are just running from God. I don't like His commandments. I don't like what I can't and I can't do. I don't like anybody to tell me what, what not to do. And, and they're, just, they're, they're just dying on the vine. You know, Jesus said, My Father prunes. You know, God knows what is bad in your life and he's going to prune them your doctor knows what's he healthy for you the nutritionist that you go to go to he knows what is the right things to eat you know we we could be as willful as we want it will not produce what we really want what we really want is to be healthy spirit soul and body what we want is to become what we what we need to become to be happy you know there's so many desires that we have that are outside the will of God, and they just, you know, there's, there's a scripture, in, in, like in Proverbs, that says, it seems right to a man, but it ends in death. There's so many things that seem right. They seem satisfying. When Adam and Eve ate that fruit in the Garden of Eden, they thought they would be satisfied. They thought they would finally have the fulfillment that they desired and they needed. Instead, the Bible said that they fell because who they were to be and what their destiny was to be, they were robbed. They were robbed. They were lied to. They were told today, media, culture, uh, I, I mean, they're just lying to us. It's just victims trying to comfort themselves and justify themselves by making us into victims too. No, our job is to lift them up, to pull them out. They're the blind leading the blind, but we see we see, we know God, we see the will of God, we see Jesus, we see his plans, we see his purposes, we see that they're healthy. We see, we're not blind anymore. Our job is not to lead them in their victimhood and let us drag, or, or to have them drag us into their victimhood and into their sinfulness and into their foolishness because they've given up. Christians don't give up. Christians are more than a conqueror. And yeah, there are things in the world that God defines as good and God defines as bad, you know, I mean, you could go out in your backyard and eat a poisonous mushroom and say, well, I'll, like, I just wanted to do it. I think it might be good for me. <laughs> There's lots of things that we think a man's way leads to death, the Bible says. It might seem right, but it ends in death. So the most important thing is to restore that relationship with God, to humble yourself before God, to say, God, I am sorry. I've gone in the wrong direction, had the wrong thoughts, wrong desires, wrong thoughts, wrong desires, wrong direction, wrong thoughts. Wrong direction, wrong desires. This is powerful basics. Powerful, powerful basics. Get a hold of this. Say, God, I want to go in the right direction. I want to have the right desires. I need it. I need it. It's powerful. So, you know, right relationship with God. I'm committing to you, God. I'm committing to your will. I'm committing to your plans. I'm committing to your purposes. Uh, I am committing to what's right desires, what's 
what's a right action, God will strengthen you. And all of a sudden, you will see a heaviness will lift off your soul. I talked last week, the soul is the intermediary. When the soul gets heavy, the whole man gets heavy. You know, we collapse from the inside out, not from the outside. And we there's outside pressure, but it's the strength. It's, I was reading a thing about a diving bell. You know, they send these diving bells into the into that 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 trench that's hundreds and hundreds and maybe thousands of feet deep. And the outside pressure is so much, but the strength inside that bell is greater than the pressure that's outside. That's Christianity. And listen, diamonds are made by pressure. It may be pressing you, but as your inner man grows in strength with all might, the Bible said, then you become a diamond. You begin to sparkle. And people say, well, how did that happen? Because you resisted, because you didn't give in. Resistance makes you stronger. You know, every day I try to paddle two, three, four miles on a paddleboard. I, 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 I try to surf for like an hour and a half. Why, why do I do that? Well, I had to pick a sport because I'm not one of those guys that can go in a gym and go on a treadmill. Now, I have to be outside. I have to be something that engages my mind. I have to be, have something that's adventure or fun. I, I can't, I, I just can't be a rat on a treadmill, you know? And yes, there are times where I just love lifting weights because I, because I love the results. But it's when I get out there in nature and I see that wave and I want to catch it before I know it, I just had an hour and a half of exercise. The kingdom of God is the exact same way. Get so excited about it and before you know it, you'll be strong because you'll see the results. A very, very powerful thing. So Jesus thought a restored relationship with God and commitment to walk in this world will produce wholeness and success. It'll produce happiness, contentment, fulfillment, all these peace. Peace. The more you're outside the will of God, you're just robbed of all these things. Everybody keeps telling you, if you do what you want, you'll be happy. The exact opposite is true. Drink cyanide, you'll be happy. I mean, we're almost coming to that point where people will tell you the craziest things to be happy. I, I remember watching, uh, uh, I, I don't know whether it was YouTube or uh, TikTok, everybody was putting some kind of powder in their mouth because they said they could do it. And I, I mean, next thing you know, they cough and they're exploding and their eyes are watering. I mean, what is wrong with us? What is wrong? Why do we do things with what people we don't trust say? What what kind of attention do we, how broken are we? But yet we'll mistrust God. It's a sad season, a sad time when we'll just hear crazy things that people have to tell us. God's word, the Bible says, is tried and true. The Bible says like seven times in a furnace, silver is tried, you know. All the, all the, all the, in, all the bad components, all the dirty components, all the parts of it that are impure are, are burnt off. And what God gives you is the best, the highest grade of life you can possibly live. Love it. Third, the core of Jesus' message is love. God loves you. That's the core of your message. If you don't believe that God loves you and that everything he tells you is because he loves you, then you'll never live this. Listen, the Christian faith is about knowing and understanding how much God loves you. Apostle Paul thought it was so important. He said he, that in Ephesians, he, he prayed a prayer. He said, I pray that you may know the height and length and depth and breadth of the love of God that's in Christ Jesus for you. you know, he prayed that the eyes of your understanding would be open that you would understand the height and length and depth and breadth of the love of God. There's not a commandment that God gives you that he says to you that will rob you of anything, but life and health and vitality is what it will give you. It doesn't rob you of anything. It doesn't take anything from you. It keeps you from death. It keeps you from suffering. It keeps you from consequences. It keeps you from heartache. Trust God. Let this be the year you trust God, a new year. It's never too late to begin. It's never too late to begin. And you have to become those people who they keep trying until they succeed. It's never too late to become what you want to be. The core of Jesus' teaching is to, is to believe God loves you. But here's the key. The switch is when you start to love God. Yeah, 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 it's a powerful thing. I mean, we just think we're just supposed to sit here and God's supposed to just pour everything out on us and fix the world. But you know what? The world won't be fixed because you won't be fixed. I can love my children and my grandchildren and become so indulgent that I destroy their lives. 
There's a part of me that has to serve. There's a part of me that has to become. There's a part of me that has to become like God. There's a part of me that has to rise out of trouble and obstacles and temptations and trials. And I have to become whole. I have to become strong. The element of life that, that, that turns the switch from someone that's defeated is when they just stop living for themselves and they start living for a purpose, a cause. The, the reason we exist. The reason we exist is because God loves us and we were created to love God. When we love God, we love who God is and we identify with who he is and then we admire that. I was watching my granddaughter the other day, one of my, one of her, her um, one of my son's wives, brothers is a big wave surfer, who surfs at pop, pipeline and I, I mean, my granddaughter's only five years old, and she looked at him with admiration. You know, she sees this, you know, she sees this hero because he's accomplished something. We look at God because he's our hero. He's accomplished something. He's overcome evil. He has, he doesn't do evil. He doesn't hurt other people. He doesn't do anything at someone else's expense. He does no harm. He does good constantly. He's generous. He's kind. He's merciful. He's good. He blesses. He put his will on the earth so we would know how to live healthy, so we'd know how to treat one another. Unless you learn to love, you can't just love yourself. Lucifer loved himself. He thought he was better than everybody else. And when he did, trying to satisfy that hole in his ego, he destroyed everything around him. And a third of the angels fell from heaven. And the whole world was in the corrupt state it is because until we learn to love other people as much as ourselves, we are so deeply broken, so deeply wounded, so far from God, because God is love. If God is love, you have to be love. And if you can't love God as perfect, you'll never love your fellow man. I mean, these are the great truths of the Bible. God is love. God is love. And when you see the commands in the Bible and the things you have to obey, listen, it's just, this is how you love. It's, it, it, the commands are definitions. This is wrong, this is right, this is true love, this is fake love. So many people just live in a hypocrisy. It's so amazing how we like these, how we like these shows, you know, uh, what do you call them? reality shows, because they, they love to show the flaws and the weaknesses of people. It's a terrible thing how we revel in the flaws and weaknesses of, the, of, of, of people. And you know what you'll admire, you become? Worship is we admire God and we become like Him. And in doing that, we rise out of our old selfish nature and we become powerful. We're not dependent on what other people think about us. There's an esteem inside of us that's so strong we're able to give of ourselves. That's who God is. God is so secure in who He is. He doesn't need, He's not dependent on you praising God or thanking God or worshiping God. No, all those things are for you. Worship is for you. That you would admire what is good and right because what you worship, you become. And it's so important. And listen to this. So Jesus' message is love. And then live out the word. Live out the word. So those commands are, are teaching us how to love ourselves, how to love God, how to love one another. When we break them, we hurt ourselves, we hurt others, and we hurt the kingdom of God. And then all the consequences fall on us like a ton of bricks. I, I was watching a, one of those funniest home videos and a guy was trying to fix his roof and the whole side of the house fell on and almost killed him. It, you know, that's what we are. We keep picking at this one little thing and the, the whole thing falls down on us. So live out his word. Walk in his word. Obey his word. Obey his commands. That's living out love. That's walking in love. That's walking in strength. That's walking. That's being like God. God never gives in to evil, no matter how much it may benefit him. No matter what power or blessing it brings him. It's just wrong. Because love is the essential fabric of the universe that holds us together and makes us who we are. And too many people have lost their identity. You watch TV, it's me, I, it's so selfish. They can't get beyond themselves. And we love these reality shows. It's big personalities loving themselves. It's really just broken people crashing on broken people. It's so sad. And we watch the train work and we think it's funny. I remember someone said, go watch the Tiger King and go watch this. I, I don't want to watch broken people. I, I, I don't want to watch other people's messed up lives. I'm trying to fix my messed up life. Expect his care. Expect God's care. 
God is going to care for you every single day. He's going to lead you, going to guide you, going to teach you. Take time to connect with God. That's how that happens. Prayer, reading the Word, meditating. Let God guide you. Let Him in. You know, no matter what you want to become, you're going to have to study. I mean, whether you want to be an architect, an accountant, or a, a, a baseball player, you're going to have to study, you're going to have to train, you're going to have to do the hard work. That's how you become what you want to be. Expect His care. Every day is going to be caring for you, speaking to you, ministering to you, strengthening you, calling you to something, encouraging you. He's the coach. The Bible said the Holy Spirit is the coach. He comes alongside. Literally, the Bible said He, he comes along. He's the comforter. You know, he's the encourager. He's not just saying, hey, do this. He's saying, you can do it. Come on. I'm with you. I'm in your corner. I believe in you. It's powerful stuff. Christianity is powerful stuff. Expect this care. And finally, I, I, I want to close with this. And be a blessing to the world around you. And you'll enter eternal life full and fulfilled and joyful. Be a blessing to the world around you. When you start to affect other people's lives for the better, you're starting to become who God calls you to be. Can we pray together? Let's pray this prayer for a life of strength and fulfillment. Pray this with me. Say, Jesus, I want that precious relationship with God. I want to look to God as my hero. I want to worship what's good and right. And so, Jesus, I ask you to forgive me and to come into my life and fill me with those values, those truths, your word, that I can become strong and become all that you called me to be. Come on, pray this word. Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I receive your forgiveness to be all that you call me to be. Again, thank you for tuning in. We love you so much. It's such a blessing to come to you every single week. I hope you were strengthened. I hope you received something from God today. And I know that God will help you. God bless you. Talk to you soon. And if you get a chance, watch the messages a couple times during the week. Let them be your, um, your pep talks to victory. And we give Jesus all the praise in Jesus' name. Just in
of heaven held its breath Till that stone was moved for good For the Lamb had conquered death And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in awe For the souls of all who'd come To the Father are restored And the church of Christ was born Shall not kneel, shall not faint By his blood and in his name In his freedom I am free For the love of Jesus Christ Who has resurrected me Praise the of King.